Hi, I'm Renaud from Our Mountains, and today we're going to be talking about springs again, but this time how to use them in field using code, whether you're using spring components, so how to pilot these, or directly in your own code without using any component using the Springs API. So first, uh, let's have a look at how to use code to control or spring components. So to do that, I'm in a scene, I have a very simple cube. I'm gonna add a mm spring scale component to it, press play, just to see if everything is working fine. I'm gonna press my bump random button and you can see it's moving, it's scale, everything's fine. We're good to go. So now I'm gonna create a new class and I'm going to call that test spring. And I'm going to open it here so you can see. I'm going to remove all of that. And I'm going to declare a public spring scale something like that. And on update, I'm going to go and say if input dot key down space, then my still spring dot bump random, right? So what this does is I've declared a reference to a Spring scale, so that's the component we just added on our cube. And on update, every time I'm going to press down the space key, I'm going to call bump random on it. Very, very simple code. I'm going to create an empty object to host my test spring component. There we go. I'm going to drag the cube. Yeah, but of course I could be getting that reference anywhere I want via get component, via, you know, like any of your usual ways will work. It's a regular mono behavior. And now when I press space, you can see that it's bumping randomly. All right, next, um, what else can I do? Well, I can call all of the methods that we saw in the previous video. Uh, so you could call restore initial values, you could call stop, you could call finish. Um, I'm going to show you one thing. I'm going to expose a vector free and I'm going to call it move to value, uh, for example. And instead of calling bump random, I'm going to call move to move to value, right? So now When I press play, if I were to set my move to value to 0, 050, 0, well, that's not very smart of me, right? That's better. Um, but I can also say, I don't know, something like that. And so every time I press space, it's going to go to that value I specified. That value could come from your logic. It could be something that uh, is a reaction to an enemy attack. It could be anything. It's a simple vector free. Another way of doing what I've just done would be uh, to just declare a vector free locally. And I guess I would do something like that. Um, but instead of one, let's say uh, two, three, four, I'm very imaginative and so now when i press play and then if i press space that we get all result so as you can see controlling spring components via code is usually a one-liner uh it's very very simple you could do um you could do bump random, you could do bump, in which case you would likely have to pass also a vector free. So let's go back and see 
if that works in this case now I'm gonna randomly bump I would need to tweak my vector free to have a stronger value but you get the idea and yeah you can just call any any of the methods that are on the vector free component so if you look at the public API here, you have move to, move to additive, move to subtractive, move to random, move to instant, move to random, but then you specify the bounds of your random, bump, bump random, bump random with the bounds specified, stop, restore initial value, restore initial value, and so on and so on. So very, very simple to control spring components in fill. All right, so the last thing I wanted to show you today was how you can use the Springs API without using any component directly in your code. And to do that, I'm going to reopen my test class. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to remove that part. I was still going to, at some point, probably going to need some input. And I'm going to declare a public mm spring float. And that's our base class that we're going to use to well expose in our own inspector some spring settings and that's going to drive basically our spring once i've declared it the next thing i want to do just to be sure i don't forget is at update i'm going to go and say i want to update the spring value that that's that one line is necessary for the spring to be active um of course if i comment that line my spring just doesn't update itself every frame and its value will remain the same it's asking for delta time so unless i'm running my own time scale i'm just going to go with time dot delta time and you can just always make sure you have that line and you're going to be good that's it now we have a functioning spring we have a value that is driven by that spring engine and that is going to always update the issue we have right now is that well it's at an equilibrium right it's not moving so we want something to move the spring to alter the spring so that it actually does something and it becomes visible so one thing we could do is declare a public float um, that i'm going to call my value for now and and then what we could do would be uh once we've updated our spring value we could say well my value is my spring my spring dot current value and by doing that what i'm doing is at update i'm saying update my spring whatever happens to it like maybe it's been bumped maybe it's been moved to a different position and that's good and once you've updated that then i want you to take the value of that spring and assign it to my value. That said, once we've done that, we still haven't uh, moved the spring. So uh, what we're going to do is when we press space, we're going to say my spring dot bump, and I'm going to bump that by five because why not? And I'm just going to save that. And now I'm going to select my spring so remember that right now we're just moving a float value so nothing is going to happen in the game view just look at the inspector on the right press play i'm going to press space and you can see that my value is now moving boom and you can see that my spring value is being changed of course now in my own class i have access to damping and frequency settings and i can well maybe not that low uh, and i can move them and you can see that i have a spring so now that i have that value well my value would probably not just be a float it would be i don't know the mana of my character it could be anything you want a position or something um Let's, let's use a position as an example. So I could now do this.transform.position is a new vector free. Um, let's go with something like that. But instead of x being zero, it's gonna be my value, All right? And so if I press play,
well of course I put that on an empty so it's a bit useless uh, I'm gonna copy that component I'm gonna paste it remove all that paste it on that cube there we go remove the spring from the void press play again press space and now you can see that when I bump my spring it actually does something so again if I were to recap you declare a spring float there's also a spring vector 2 spring vector 3 spring color spring many more things um, then you make sure you update that spring value every frame unless you don't want to but usually you will want that line to be active as long as you know the spring can be altered and then to get the current value of the spring it's simply a reference to your spring dot current value and that's it now with that you can just uh, call bump curl move to uh, call any other method on your spring and do pretty much anything and that's it one line two lines and you get a very springy behavior i hope you learned something new today i'll see you in the next video bye bye